Let justice roll down like water, righteousness like a mighty stream, for our grandsons and granddaughters. Remember to remember the dream. Welcome to Songs and Stories from Home as we continue to remember the dream. This week, the Freedom Rides. We are at a moment, a crossroads in our nation's history, where we have an opportunity to open our eyes and ears and hearts to decide once again by our words and through our deeds whether we, as our founding documents declare, truly want to create a more perfect union. Or, when we pledge allegiance to the flag, whether we actually mean it when we end that pledge with liberty and justice for all. George Santayana famously wrote that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. I would posit that by remembering our past, we may learn from it and together help bend the arc of the moral universe toward justice. The civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s is rife with examples of those trained in nonviolence who often faced violence while doing their part to bend the ark. If the sit-ins are examples of people saying we want justice in our towns and cities, the freedom rides may be seen as people imagining justice in and for this nation as a whole. In 1946, in the Morgan versus Virginia case, the Supreme Court declared it was unconstitutional to have segregated seating on interstate buses. In 1960, in Boynton versus Virginia, the Supreme Court announced interstate transportation facilities, including bus terminals, must be integrated. The Freedom Rides were organized to test the laws of the land and to make this country answer the question on which side of liberty and justice for all will we choose to land? Questions we are asking and choices we are continuing to make today. Let justice roll down like water, righteousness like a mind stream for our grandsons and granddaughters remember to remember the dream the freedom rides of 1961 were inspired by the journey of reconciliation a two-week bus journey in 1947 the first Freedom Rides of 1961, like the Journey of Reconciliation, was organized by CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality. On May 4th, 13 riders got on a Greyhound bus in Washington, D.C., bound for New Orleans. And when they got to South Carolina, John Lewis, along with two others, were attacked, attempting to enter a whites-only waiting area. And in Atlanta, the riders separated into two groups. One got on a Greyhound bus and the other on a trailways. On May 14th, the Greyhound bus arrived in Anniston, Alabama, where an angry mob surrounded the bus as it approached the station. The driver kept going, the mob followed, bus tires slashed, a bomb was thrown into the bus, everyone escaped, and then the bus burst into flames. And the, those that escaped were surrounded and beaten. The Trailways bus traveled to Birmingham where the riders were met and beat, beaten by another mob. The picture of that burning Greyhound bus, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's horrific. And those photos appeared on front pages around the country and the world. Following the violence, Corps officials, officials decided to abandon the Freedom Rides. Diane Nash, we met her earlier, organized 10 Nashville students to take up the cause. On May 20th, they were in Birmingham, ready for the 90-mile ride to Montgomery. 
And when the group arrived there, they were attacked in Montgomery by a mob wielding bats and clubs. Attorney General Robert Kennedy sent in 600 federal marshals to stop the violence. The next night, Dr. King led a service at First Avenue, First Baptist Church, attended by more than a thousand supporters, a mob stirring outside, a group of freedom riders hidden in plain sight as members of the choir, as federal marshals held the rioters at bay. On May 24th, a group of freedom riders left Montgomery for Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi, where after attempting to use white-only facilities, they were arrested and sent to the notorious penitentiary Parchman Prison in Parchman, Mississippi. The sentence was handed down 30 days in jail. Riders decided jail, no bail, began serving time. Between June and September, more than 60 freedom rides crisscrossed the South with most converging in Jackson. 450 people were arrested and, and they went to jail. The violence sent shockwaves through the country, causing some to condemn the freedom rides and others to salute them. On November 1st, following an interstate commerce decree, white only signs came down. On the pilgrimage, we visited the old bus depot in Montgomery. It's now a museum. We were amazed by Bernard Lafayette's youthful mugshot on the wall, along with hundreds of others. And we listened to him talk about the violence and about his time in Parchman and the conviction with which he and others stood and oh, how they sang. We also went to the First Baptist Church and for one day, we became, mem we became members of the choir. This next song, it's traditional. It was adopted by the SNCC leadership, including Dr. Lafayette. The buses are a-coming, oh yes. The buses are a-coming, oh yes. The buses are a-coming, buses are a-coming. Buses are a-coming, oh yes. They're rolling into Jackson, oh yes. Rolling into Jackson, oh yes. Rolling into Jackson. Rolling into Jackson, oh, rolling into Jackson, oh, 